Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have a card making video for you that includes some watercoloring. I will be watercoloring this My Favorite Things Poppy stamp set. And so I'm going to pull out my Misty stamp positioner and a piece of watercolor paper. I think this watercolor paper is about four and a half inches wide by about 12 inches tall. And I am going to go ahead and stamp that with VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it is a waterproof ink. Also, I will be stamping each stamp um, two times, maybe even three, to make sure that I get a nice crisp outline. When you are stamping on textured paper, it is really difficult to get that crisp outline with just one single stamp. I will also be using some masking techniques today. Because this is one of my most colored stamp sets, the masks have already been created and used a number of times. Anytime I create a mask, I put it right into the stamp set and use it until it no longer sticks. So as you can tell by looking at my mask, or the masks rather, for these flowers, they are very well loved. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and try and get this stamp to stick to the paper instead of my fingernails so I can add a stem to this flower. I'm also using this little post-it note to kind of mask off that other flower stem, and then I will just kind of finagle it and Restamp it, flip the post-it note around, and stamp it again to get the bottom half of that um, flower stem, or flower stem, sorry. I decided I wanted to create a mostly one layer card. This card will be just the card panel and the card base, which is why I am masking instead of just cutting out and adding die cut images or die cut layers. The watercolors I am using today are my Magello Mission Gold watercolors. These are some watercolors that I have seen used um, by many um, artists and crafters, and I found them on a really good deal, really good deal for that brand of watercolors on Amazon one day and couldn't resist. And they are a pretty luscious watercolor. They have a nice pigment. You don't need a ton of paint to get fabulous color. They're, they are really nice to use. Watercoloring is not my greatest asset as far as coloring mediums go. It definitely takes a lot of patience and I am often not patient enough. I am trying to watercolor more so that I can develop that patience when it comes to using a medium that requires some dry time in between the layers. I am just going to continue to use this post-it note to stamp off those stems. And you can see I've just got this little bunch of poppies ready to paint. I will tape this down to a hard board so that the paper doesn't warp as much and buckle while I am adding water to it to paint. I'm just using some painter's tape that I have put across the leg of my pants to kind of take some of the stick off so the watercolor paper does not tear when I pull the tape up. I also intend to fill in the background when I'm done painting the flowers. So I needed to make sure it was taped down nice and good. I am using a Debbie Hughes method of having one paintbrush full of water and one paintbrush for the paint. And when I decided to add some yellow pigment, I actually pulled in a third watercolor brush. Now these are size two round brushes. Um, they are varying brands, I think, I've purchased them at, um, I think I purchased them from Hobby Lobby in the fine art section. And then and one set I purchased on Amazon or was given to me actually by my husband because he's a sweetie and he um, feeds my craft habit occasionally with new supplies. I did not have quite the right color for poppies of my reds in my set. I have a very small set, but I had this awesome combination of red and yellow already mixed in my palette lid. And I couldn't find a way to focus on or to um, zoom in on the coloring and the palette at the same time. So just have to trust me that I have a really nice mix in my palette. <laughs> and it was left over from another project. I don't clean my palette off. I just reuse the paint. So I am starting by adding water into the open space of the petal. And then I will drop in some red um, paint, pigment, whatever word you want to use, and then use the, the brush with water from the top of the petal back down to the center. And then I will add the yellow on top of the red so that it kind of blends together. 
This petal I'm working on now was a little bit too wet, so I'm taking what's called a thirsty brush, which is a mostly dry brush, to kind of pull some of that pigment back out. And once it dries, I will go and add another layer. And this is sped up super fast. I do not color anything this fast with any amount of accuracy. I think this is sped up eight times, if that tells you how slowly I moved. One thing I remembered to do was to not try to paint images that were next to each other as long as they were wet. That causes the images to kind of bleed together and you lose your depth and dimension and your shadows and your highlights. So I'm just kind of skipping around from flower to flower trying to do petals that are not touching each other. I did make a boo-boo when I went to color the stems because some of the petals were still wet and I had to go back and kind of fix that. But I'm trying to be patient here. In fact, the footage for this card was well over two hours. Part of that is because about halfway through the first layer, I stopped to feed my kids. <laughs> they required sustenance for the evening. <laughs> so I just kind of paused the camera, walked away, let it dry and came back and worked on it some more later. I am, I love how watercolor looks. I want to get better at it. I love watching Christina Warner and Sandy Alnock watercolor. Their, their talent, they're so talented. And I just, and Debbie Hughes too. I love the, the, the creations that Debbie Hughes creates with watercolors. I am striving to be that awesome. They're kind of my watercolor heroes right now. And one thing with watercolors is in order to get that dimension that you want, you do have to do multiple layers. Watercolor tends to fade back or die back as it dries. So it becomes much lighter than when you originally start. So for each petal, I am adding water to the petal. And then I am taking the pigment at the bottom of the, the, the darkest part of the petal. On this one at the top that's all the way open, it's the part of the petal closest to the center. Same with the one in the bottom left. The other two, it kind of depends on which petal I'm painting, whether it's the bottom of the petal or the part closest to the center of the flower. And I am just dropping a little bit of red pigment in there. And then I go back with my third brush and drop a little bit of the yellowish orange pigment in there. And then I blend it together with water. And I'm trying to remember to keep my water brush out of my paints. There were a couple of times that I went and used my water brush, which is this black one right here, and picked up the yellow pigment. And then I had to go through and rinse it off and get it all clean again and <laughs> wipe it on that microfiber cloth up there in the top right hand corner of my desk or of the screen anyway. It was nowhere near the top right hand corner of my desk. You would be appalled at the state of my desk on the regular there's always 5,000 things sitting on my desktop. <laughs> Basically, the clean part is what you see on camera. <laughs> and I think that is probably the reality for every artist, crafter, maker of any kind. Your, your workspace is clean and around it is kind of 500 projects in varying stages of completion. So I'm just kind of, I'm going to keep going here. I don't know what else to talk about watercoloring because I'm just not that, I'm not the expert. <laughs> I can just tell you what I know and what I know I have learned through trial and error. I feel like of all of the color mediums, this is the one that has been the most difficult for me to learn how to use well. Um, I started my coloring with Copic markers. No, let me take that back. I started my coloring with ink and sponge daubers, solid image stamps that you had to stamp with varying degrees of ink and kind of blend together with sponge daubers or q-tips or your fingertip and then more companies started creating these open image stamps for coloring and I did not like using a dye based marker to try and color because you get those streaks in them like you're using Crayola markers you now you don't want to color an image and then have streaks in it right I saw um many many years ago I think it was probably like Oh my gosh, we've been in this house almost eight and a half years, probably eight years ago, <laughs> right after we moved into this house, I saw a online card, online card making classes or online classes, online classes, I think. I will try and find it and link it down below. It's a Christina Warner and Jennifer McGuire class, and I took their Copic for Cardmakers class many, many years ago, 
and was instantly addicted. I love the way the alcohol markers color images without leaving streaks. So Copic markers became my first color medium. And then I moved on to Prismacolor pencils after watching lots of Sandy Onlock and Christina Warner using color pencils. And then I found watercolor pencils, which I liked because I can control that, right? Watercolor pencils offer a substantial amount of control compared to regular watercolor. And the more times I saw these awesome crafters and artists using watercolor paints, the more and more I wanted to try them. So I went and I bought this student grade watercolor set at, I don't know, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something. And I hated it. They were like chalky and gross and I did not like them at all. So I completely walked away from watercoloring. And then I saw a video where somebody was using these Gonzai Tombi watercolors and they were so luscious and creamy and beautiful. I couldn't stand it. I had to try again. So I tried, I, I purchased those. Actually, those were a, also a gift from my sweet husband. <laughs> and I practiced and practiced and practiced. And then I got frustrated because I wasn't achieving the look I wanted. So I put it away. And I just every once in a while would get a wild hair and pull out a stamp set. And over time, I have gotten a little bit more confident, a little bit better with my control and my patience. The thing with watercolor, yeah, see, there it is. There is the big, huge oops I made. The great thing is that red and green are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. So it's just going to create a shadow. I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry a little bit, dry back a little bit. Add some more red pigment over that and it will be perfectly fine. It will just look like a shadow. Anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> the, the biggest issue or the, not issue, the biggest um, tool you have when you're using watercolor is patience. And I tend to be um, a lazy crafter in that aspect. I want it done. As soon as it comes into my head, I want it out on paper and done, right? I want to see instant gratification. So watercoloring is definitely a learning curve for me in that respect. So here I have filled in the middles of those poppies with some dark brown and off camera after it dries, I did go ahead and add the white polka dots back in or the white not polka dots, the white dots for the, the stamen, is that the right word? Back into the flower. Now I am going to go ahead and fill in that background. So I put a puddle of water down around the, the, flowers. The cool thing with watercolors is it goes where it's wet. It's like all water, right? The path of least resistance. And so if I put the water color or if I put the plain water on the paper and pull it away from the flowers, the pigment is going to come away from the flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish filling this in. I'm often off camera. I apologize for that. I was trying to tip the hardboard around so that the water and the pigment would kind of go flow. I don't know what the right word is there. Flow and cover the entire piece of paper so that I could go ahead and dry that and cut it down. Now I did heat set this a little bit, but this is also a point where I kind of put it down and let it go. I went and got my kids all tucked into bed for the night and came back and finished. Rarely do I come back in my craft room after they're in bed because once they're in bed, I go to bed. <laughs> Y'all, I am not a night owl anymore. I have these, um, this is my favorite things, and they are the wonky stitched rectangles. And they cut out this rectangle shape, and it has kind of this um, wonky stitching line inside the rectangle. And it's a, it's a really old die set. I'm not entirely sure if they actually still make it. But it's one of my favorites for adding just a little bit of interest to the outside edge of a panel. So I have taped that down to my watercolor paper that is dry. I waited for it to dry and run that through my die cut machine. And I, the, the tape was new. <laughs> Don't do that because it stuck to my die. I'm really glad I did not have that hanging over the edge into the, the panel or I would have ripped the, the watercolor paper on the panel. So I have this piece of red cardstock it is probably a Stampin' Up! cardstock, and it is four and a quarter inches wide by 12, um, 11 inches tall, and I have scored it in the middle at five and a half to create a top fold portrait card. This is kind of my, my go-to. I prefer this. I don't know why. 
I just prefer this card. And this is my big old huge roll of foam tape. This is the one I buy on Amazon. Um, once a year or so is about how often it lasts me. It depends how many, um, what's the word for it? Interactive cards I create during the year. But this roll of tape is huge. It's like the size of somebody's head. I probably have said that on other videos before, but it really is the size of somebody's head. Anyways, <laughs> I am going to go ahead and not sparingly add some foam tape to the back of this card panel. I don't want it to warp or cave in, especially if this is one that I put in the mail and most of my cards go in the mail. I make them for very often specific people. So there we go. Here is my card and all that is left now is a sentiment. And this stamp set has some pretty cool sentiments. So I am going to take the piece of that watercolor paper that I put the blue paint on and use that for my sentiment. I will um, use a mini misty. Sorry, this is not a mini misty. I will use my misty stamp positioner to stamp that a couple of times. And I'm using um, VersaClaire ink this time. I really like this VersaClaire ink because even on this watercolor paper, I got a nice image of this really thin font. First time out the gate. Yeah, you don't hardly ever get that, especially with fonts. So I am cutting this down and I will layer it on a piece of that same red cardstock just so that it stands up off of the flower panel a little bit. I have not tried vers this VersaClaire for watercoloring. I think it's supposed to be waterproof. I'm gonna have to try that and see if I can get the images stamped just one time as well. Huh, the things you think about when you're doing voiceovers for your videos. <laughs> now this is a serious scrap piece of paper and if this does not give you an, any indication on what kind of paper hoarder I am, then probably you need to look at this really slowly because most people in their right mind would have thrown this little teeny tiny piece of used up paper away a long time ago. But no, it was in my scrap paper little cubby on my desk mm -hmm. so that I had it when I needed it. I am just going to go ahead and put some um, tape runner on the back of that and add it to the front of my card. And there we go. We have this beautiful little um, watercolored poppy. I think it's beautiful. I'm calling it beautiful. I will go ahead and put a piece of copy paper on the inside so that I have somewhere to write a message. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. Do me a favor and shoot me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thanks.